welcome to week 36 of Esper's Refit and as you can see I'm wearing my Sunday best and that's because it's a Sunday for the first time we're actually recording an update on a Sunday in the yard and that's because I've actually relocated I now live closer to the boat yard and uh, really this is a move towards winding the project down and uh, in an effort to crack on with the deck fitting so we can take the tent down so this week uh, we only worked for three days. It was a Eid this week, so all of our workers were off until Thursday. That is, except Nut, who's been in and has been making fantastic progress on the electric uh, system. Uh, Ton and I have also been concentrating on laying down more uh, deck fittings with the Bootle tape. Now, since recording the uh, last clip of our Genoa track where we laid down the black tape, I'm happy to report we now have a load of uh, white tape so we'll be using that but since that uh, recording there's been a little bit of discussion on uh, the use of butyl tape versus the uh, stronger polyurethane based uh, he adhesive sealants and having used butyl tape now still not tested but I'm very confident that uh, it's the right thing to do it's the right way forward hopefully next week I'll record the laying of our port side Genoa track because the last recording we did, we only laid bootle uh, on the bolts. This time we're actually laying the bootle tape underneath every single fitting. So uh, we'll do a bit of recording on that. Anyway, here's what's happened uh, in the last three days. It's Thursday and this is the first day back for Tom and uh, myself as well actually. I've been moving house over the last couple of days. So not much has happened this week, uh, not at least on board Esper, but uh, down below we have a new cutlass bearing. Let's see if I can get a better light on that. So this is our uh, tool on cutlass bearing. And uh, also on the max prop we have put in our grease nipples. So those have been tapped which allows us to grease the max prop without taking it apart and we just need to find uh, some uh, little allen screws to go in there welcome back Tom how was your holiday yeah holiday good good excellent yeah. what have you been doing today hmm? today which job have you been doing Okay. Yeah, should we have a look? Yeah, good. So this is the cavity underneath the chart table. And uh, as I explained last time, we're going to put the larger inverter in there and possibly the laptop. And this is actually removable, so we take this one out. And the back panel has been epoxied in place. And that is because we have taken delivery of our 12 volt to 12 volt uh, voltage regulators. See if I can find one. And that's what this is here. There's not enough room to put these behind the panel. So instead, as you can see, this is the panel. Not much room there. Um, can't fit them in here, unfortunately, because of the uh, breakers on this side. So we thought we'd, um, we'd actually mount them on the back there. Now Nut has done a fantastic job here of tidying up the cables. It looks far less intimidating than it did last week. And he's made a point of removing all the old cables and uh, putting together the new ones. Kept them very neat and tidy. Um, you'd need to have seen it before to have understood but uh, he's probably removed about a third of the cables from here it just makes things a little bit more manageable this afternoon Ton and I are going to start on the uh, butyl tape of the Genoa track and you can see here we have white tape Now the reason for this is because uh, bootle tape has a tendency to extrude not just immediately after screwing it down but actually after some weeks and some people have even claimed after some months you can see it extruding there 
obviously black isn't as pretty as white so we've finally received our white bootle tape the other thing that we didn't do which we should have done we, was to actually run the tape underneath the entire track rather than just the heads so uh, that's what we're going to do on the uh, on this Genoa track today is actually uh, do the whole lot so underneath the track uh, as well as um, the bolts themselves So this week Nut has been concentrating mainly on the main circuit and also the charging circuit as well. And we've been using a simple boat wiring diagram and this was put together by uh, the YBW Practical Boat Owner Forum member uh, PVB. And my apologies because I don't actually know your real name but uh, he got in touch with me last year after I had some uh, issues with my charging circuit and uh, recommended this basic. Uh, schematic and this is what we've been following and uh, Nut who's very experienced uh, says that uh, this is a good system it's simple we're putting in things like uh, 250 amp uh, fuses and uh, obviously making use of the 1-2 all switch as well to allow us to run in parallel both battery banks in order to start the engine um, with regards to the charging of course we have the alternator to battery uh, charger uh, unit which is the sterling unit and this has worked very well for us uh, so far Tom has been making this uh, cavity which sits below the uh, the, the three uh, cupboards in the chart table area and uh, one of the things I wanted was a changeover switch which allows us to change the uh, main circuit over to an inverter so when we're not on shore power but want to run uh, 240 volt uh, products then we can switch over to the inverter and that's uh, the changeover switch which we're going to hide inside the cupboard it for week 36. It was only a three day week but we made good progress and we also waved goodbye another three boats. In particular Phil from Nom de Plume who was uh, really helpful in bringing over some of our gear from Lankawi and the other Phil of Big Bandicoot. They both left yesterday and have headed back to Lankawi.